Good morning. I just wanted to make this video. God gave me a message years ago, and I've sat on this thing, and I've sat on this thing for many years. And I just want to get this thing out. I've been just sitting on this thing for so long. You know, and the message is really, what is the evidence that God is with you? How do you know God is with you? I know the scripture says that God is with you. It says he'll never leave us nor forsake us. But God gave me this message, and I'm going to just unload it. You know, in the book of uh, Judges, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. And he said, he tells Gideon, Gideon's hiding out from the enemy there. They're in bondage to the enemy and everything and being looted and pillaged and stolen from. And he's hiding out from the enemy. And the angel of the Lord comes to him and says, The Lord is with you, thou mighty man of valor. Calls him a mighty man of valor while he's hiding out. And you know Gideon's looking around trying to figure out who's he talking to. I'm hiding and he's calling me a mighty man of valor. But he says the Lord is with you. And Gideon goes on and he asks a simple question. He says, if the Lord is with us, then how is all of this stuff befalling us? And where are the miracles that our fathers told us of? How he delivered us out of Egypt, out of bondage, and out of slavery and tyranny. If the Lord is with us, why is this stuff befalling us? And where are the miracles our fathers told us of? And that thing unloaded on me when I first saw it. You know, and you go on in the, in the New Testament... You know, the disciples run across um, a situation and they see the, a blind beggar and they, and, they, uh, and they said, Lord, who sinned that this man, that this, this blindness has happened to this man? And Jesus goes on and says, Nobody sinned but for the glory of God. Because they understood that sometimes things happen because of the sin in our lives. Sin is what brings us into situations. Sin is what brings us into bondage and slavery to the enemy, to the adversary. And puts us in situations. That's why in the Old Testament, in the law, when Moses is giving them the law, he says, if you forsake your sins, none of these things will come upon you. But if you forsake the Lord your God, all these things that I put on Egypt will come upon you. Because we have sinned, relatives have sinned, somebody has sinned. You know, we're not where we should be with God, maybe. And, some, and these things come upon us. But you know, in John 3, God has an encounter, Jesus has an encounter with Nicodemus. And Nicodemus says, Teacher, we know that you're a man sent from God. For no one can do the things that you do except for God be with him. He understood that if God is with us, we can do these things. He understood if God is with you, he understood nobody can do the things that you do except for God be with you. You know, in the book of Acts, it goes on and it says, in the book of Acts, he says, how Jesus of Nazareth went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God was with him, so he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil.
So if God is with us, we should be going about manifesting the kingdom, doing good to others, and healing all who are oppressed of the devil. For God is with us. You know, and I don't know what you're facing in life. I don't know what it is you've gone through and where you're at. Maybe you're in the midst of something. Maybe you're going through something. You know, I don't know what enemy you're facing. You know, many times I think about, you know, the scripture, when I'm going through things, the scripture says, God has enlarged me in my distress, the psalmist says. And when I feel so distressed and overwhelmed, I just look back and say, God's enlarging me. You know, and, and the enemy that you're facing, you know, many times that enemy comes to when you're at the point of your biggest breakthrough, the point of your biggest miracle. You're about to enter into your promised land. You're about to receive your inheritance. You're about to receive your miracle. That's when the enemy comes against you the most and tries to scare you off and get you to back up and back off from, from your faith and get off of your faith and get you to run and give up. He tries to get you to give up right before you're about to enter into your promised land. Look at the children of Israel when God led them out of Egypt from slavery and did so many miracles. No matter what he did, it was never enough. And the, and the enemy always came at him with another situation and another situation trying to get him to back off. You know, and Moses sent the 12 spies into the land. Two comes back with a good report. Ten come back with a negative report. The ten that came back with a negative report, they didn't lie. There were giants in the land. And they were as like grasshoppers in their, in their sight. But it was a negative report, and the truth beyond edification is just a bad report. And it doesn't help you. If it doesn't build you up, edify you, encourage you, it's doing you no good. You know, and because of that negative report, they believe, the people believed that negative report, and it caused a generation to be sentenced to death in the wilderness, and the next generation go in and inherit the land. Because of fear, doubt, and unbelief. It wasn't that they didn't believe in God. They just didn't believe that God would do it. It, didn't, it wasn't that they didn't believe God could do it. They just didn't believe He would do it. And they got in fear. They got in doubt. And they got in unbelief. And the Bible says... The fearful and the unbelieving will have their place in a lake of fire. Because anything that's not of faith is sin. You know, and you have to choose. You have to decide. Even this day, right now, are you going to believe God? Are you going to believe the Word of God? Are you going to believe what God is saying and what God is doing in your life? Or are you going to believe what your situation says? Are you going to believe what your circumstances say? Are you going to believe the lie of the enemy, the, the, the lie that the devil is saying? A friend of mine, David Holcomb, used to tell me all the time that if you believe the lie, you empower the liar. If you believe the truth, you empower the truth. The truth and you can believe the truth that God is telling you, what His Word says, or you can believe what the situation says, what the lie says. But what you believe, you empower it. You know, in the children of Israel, they believed the ten spies that brought the negative report, and they empowered them. They empowered the enemy, they empowered the lie, and it cost them their life. And the next generation went in, and the two men that brought back the good report went into their land, into the promise, 40 years later, inherited the promise and inherited what God promised them. And I like that scripture in Romans, I think it's chapter 4, it says about Abraham. It says, Abraham, being a man a hundred years old, and Sarah, being 90 years old, 
in the deadness of her womb. Abraham did not doubt, but he believed the promises of God, that God would do what he said he would do. And the New Living Translation says, no matter how impossible the situation got, his faith only grew stronger. Abraham did not believe what the situation said. He did not believe it, even though Sarah was 90 years old and he was 100 years old. He still believed the promises of God, that God said it. He said it. He's never failed me. He's never let me down, even though I've made mistakes, even though I tried to take matters into my own hand. God has never failed me. He's never let me down. And that's why the scripture says that Abraham is the father of our faith. And you look in the book of Hebrews 11, the, what we call the Hall of Fame, the Faith Hall of Fame, it puts Sarah and Abraham right there. Right there is the men and women of faith that they believe God and they believe the promises of God. And you have to ask yourself, are you going to believe the promises of God, the Word of God, or are you going to believe the lie and the liar? You can spend all day in front of the TV. It's not going to help you. You can spend all day working and working and working and trying to make a living and doing the stuff that you do, but you're not spending time in the Word and in prayer and believe in God. You're going to get what you sow. What you sow today, you'll reap tomorrow. And that's all it, it gets down to. We live this life, if by strength, 80, 90 years maybe, and that's it. And that's just a breath of breath today, here today, and gone tomorrow. And we spend our whole life sowing for this life that only lasts 90, 70, 80, 90 years. And we don't even sow for eternity. That's forever and ever and ever. And the scariest thing is standing before God and having nothing to present for Him. Having nothing to present to Him for our life that we live this day that will stand before him and is he going to say well done thou good and faithful servant or is he going to look at us and say well you know and I want to be able to say well done you know I mean and I don't get scared of eternity and being cast into the lake of fire what scares me more is that I'll stand before God and not having fulfilled the things that he's called me to fulfill. Brother Crandall and Blue Ridge and that school invested in our lives, in my life, in my family's life. They invested in us. God invested in us through them. And I want to be able to present before God something on that investment. I don't want to be like the man that stood there and hid one talent in the dirt. But I want to be like the man with the five talents that invested it and presented ten. You know, so we can just believe God. I don't know what you're saying. Don't be like an orphan that just, you know, believes his father, believes in his father, but don't believe that his father loves him enough to do it for him. You know, Psalms 30 verse 2 says, O Lord God, I cried unto you, and you have healed me. You know, he cried unto him, and he says, he, you have healed me. Already did it. God's already done it. Believe God. Believe God. I'm believing God with you. You know, and just stand on the Word of God and trust the Word of God. You know, and doctors diagnosed me years ago with early stages of Parkinson's disease. And I don't care. I don't care what doctors say. I don't care what nobody says. I believe the Word of God. And the Word of God has the final say in my life. And I don't care what circumstances say, how many times, man, things have happened and people have said things to me and I walked away upset and discouraged and God speaks to me in that still small voice and says, what is that to me? What is that to me? I mean, if he can raise a man from the dead that's been dead for three days or four days, 
what is my situation? I mean, your situation may be dead for three or four days. You know, look in Ezekiel 36. I mean, not 36, Ezekiel, where he's talking to the dry bones. He says, can these bones live? And Ezekiel says, Lord, you know. And God says, prophesy to them bones. You know, begin to prophesy to your situation. Begin to speak the word of life over your situation. Find a scripture that addresses your situation and speak the word of God over that situation. You know, if you're struggling with fear, Isaiah 41, 10 and 13 Fear not, neither be dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help you. Yes, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You know, and just believe God. And let God bless you and let God step into your situation. God is ready and willing. You're not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. You know, and just just let God step into your situation. You know, maybe there's things in your life that's holding you back from being able to receive from God. You know, we're called to be kings and priests. We need to stop living like paupers. Maybe you're living like a pauper and you're thinking like a pauper. You're thinking like a slave. The children of Israel's problem is God got them out of Egypt, but he couldn't get Egypt out of them. He got them out of slavery, but he couldn't get that slave mentality out of them. And maybe that's your problem, that God has delivered you out of things and he's saved you and got things out of your, out of, got you out of things, but you're still thinking like that slave, still thinking like that orphan. And God's calling you a son. You're not thinking like a son. You know, you believe God's able to do it, but you don't believe he will do it. You know, and don't, you need to just believe God loves you and because he loves you, He's going to do it for you. He will do it for you. He wants to do it for you. And he, He's going to do it for you. Such as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So begin to think straight. Man, you're just one thought away from a miracle. You're one thought away from a breakthrough. If you're not receiving what you want to receive, what you're believing to receive, man, just begin to change your way of thinking. Change your thoughts. Take another thought. Take another thought, man. Get in there and just change your thought and begin to think like God. Think like Christ. Christ is in you and you're in Christ. Christ is seated in heavenly places and you're in Him. That means you're seated in heavenly places with Him. Man, there is nothing the devil can do to stop you. You're overwhelmingly victorious. Only person can stop you is you in your mouth because your words are seeds. Their life or their death. Nobody can stop you. No devil in hell can stop you. Only person can stop you is you, your thinking, and your talking. Because you sow a thought, you speak it, you act on it, and it reaps. You reap from it. So change your thoughts, change your talk, and change your way of living. A. A. Allen said, he said, I heard him speak this message one time. He said, think big, believe big, talk big, and God will do big. So be encouraged. God is a big God. Don't look how big your situation is, but look how big your God is. And watch and see what God will do. Be blessed. I'm praying for you and agreeing with you.